Stealing I don't care about expensive things, cashmere coats, diamond rings, don't mean a thing, all I care about is Bob Fosse's childhood sexual assault. Honest to God, all I care about is law. Hey everybody! Hi. Welcome to episode six of Fosse Verdon, mm -hmm. entitled "All I Care About," and this was a doozy. A lot to unpack. This was a doozy. Um, uh, it started. Well, it started with Fosse uh, working on editing Lenny. Lenny, yeah. And uh, also working on Chicago or starting work on Chicago at the same time. Yeah, Chicago was just about to start. Yeah. Yes. And um, Bob Fosse, if you've ever seen a Bob Fosse film like Cabaret mm -hmm. or All That Jazz or Lenny, you know that he's like the king of editing. He like got into the editing room. He was a theater oh, guy yeah. his whole life, then discovered editing and was like, what is this? And became obsessed with mm -hmm. editing. So the opening sequence is him in the editing room of Lenny and Gwen coming in oh, with the poster markup for Chicago. I want to show you these yes. markups, Bobby, for Chicago. Ooh, and he's like, and whatever. And all of a sudden, the editing goes insane, and mm. it's fast cuts, cuts, oh, cuts, 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 yes. cuts, 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 cuts. Um, and it's obviously building towards his heart attack, which he had during Chicago. Um, and that was pretty, that was really cool because again, yeah. that was another opening sequence that felt like it was directed by Bob Fosse. Yeah. And then it jumped into the framing device of the episode, which is basically Bob Fosse doing stand up. Yeah. He's basically doing the Lenny Bruce. He's doing the Lenny thing. Bruce thing. So, um, also Lenny was basically Lenny Bruce was played by Dustin Hoffman in Lenny. The guy they had doesn't look like not Dustin at Hoffman, all, but, but it's okay. They don't ever bring up his name, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, so then it segues into Bob Fosse doing stand up, and it's in black and white, just like Lenny is. Um, and he basically goes the rest of the episode kind of doing punchlines with, yeah. but I'm that's but the device that's used through that whole episode, used through the whole episode. Um, okay, so this episode is all about Chicago, mm -hmm. and it's all about Bob Fosse's heart attack, and it's all about, well, we finally get into his childhood oh, a little bit. So much about his childhood. Yeah. Like, way more in detail. Mm -hmm. We had our Gwen Verdon, like... <laughs> Why is Gwen Verdon fucked up from her childhood episode yeah. a few ago, and now it's Bobby's turn? Yeah, and um, it's pretty spot on. Uh, he goes into this in all that jazz, and it's in his biography, so it's very well documented. It is. So he was basically dancing in burlesque clubs. Mm -hmm starting in his tweens. He was part of a little dancing team with this kid named uh, Charlie Grass. And uh, his mom was just oblivious and his dad was like, whatever, if you're making money, yeah. it's fine. His dad wanted to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. his yeah, son. and his mom was like, gee whiz, my son's in showbiz. Yeah, he's a star. He's a star, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. And uh, so he's doing these shows in these burlesque clubs mm -hmm. where he, obviously he's you know, it's not great for kids to be doing shows at burlesque clubs. And then, the, uh, you know, the strippers there basically sexually assaulted him. Yep. And it's this double standard since forever, the whole idea that, you know, if a girl has sex at 13, it's an assault. But if a guy does it, he's the man. It's high five. Yeah. yeah. And it's something they touched on in the last episode they when did. Patty Chayefsky and them were like, Oh, you're so lucky. Look at you having sex with all yeah, these they strippers. were broing out. They were broing out over it. And it really yeah. shows how much it clouded kind of Fosse's entire mm -hmm. life as sexual assault when you are a child, obviously is it what to do. It yeah. Shapes you. So it, it really, it doesn't excuse, but it explains why he was the way he was, why he made the connections he made, why he was so messed up. Mm -hmm. uh, the biography that this show is based on by Sam Lawson really presents the idea that he's always trying to prove something. Like, he's trying to get back and prove that 
you know, yeah. that you can't be taken advantage of. Yeah. And, um, you know, they show that in this episode with the really creepy moment where he's like, Annie, I just came mm -hmm. out of my heart surgery. Prove to me that I'm a man. And he basically makes Anne Ranking have sex with him in the hospital room. It's really uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Um, but I'm glad they finally touched on it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very important part of his life and who he is or yeah. was. And True. And why he was the way he was. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Um, again, they're, they, I will say they, they are like continuing with the idea that they're not really going to explain stuff. It's no. like, we're doing Lenny. We're not going to explain what Lenny is really. Like, I don't know that it makes a difference. I don't think it does either. Uh, it's you, you get the idea that he's yeah. working on a movie and he's editing like yeah. crazy. And then Gwen comes in and she's like, do this for me, Bobby. And he's like, whatever you want, toots. Yeah. And uh, Michelle Williams, as always, is pff, amazing. Mm -hmm. She still is just nailing it. Um, she's so great in this episode, just like hovering over Bobby the whole it's time. Perfect. We do start uh, getting into the Chicago rehearsals. Mm -hmm. We see Chita. A little bit of Chita. We see mm -hmm. Chita Rivera for the first time. She looked a lot like her. She really, really looks like Chita. Yeah. And she wasn't in this episode very much, and I really hope they show her more. I don't know if they will, but like, <laughs> yeah, she, I can say they have to, but they don't. Like all the other people who yeah. are portraying real life people, with the exception of like maybe Michelle Williams, are mm -hmm. like doing an okay job, but I could still yeah. see them. But I don't know. She really, really looks looked a like Chita. Lot like her. Yes. And um, they started showing how <laughs> Fozzie was having his <laughs> <laughs> coughing fits. Yeah, he which kept having to sneak off. It kind of like defined his life from then on. Like it was one of those things about Bob. I mean, he smoked like, I, I mean, I don't know. What's a crazy amount? I don't know like how many. Like 40 packs a day. Yeah, but it was something crazy like that. Like it was a really it insane a lot. amount of cigarettes a day. And then all the, he took like so many pills. He took so much speed. Like, oh, what a mess. Um, we see Nicole finally as a teenager. Oh, yeah, Gwen does her makeup. It's some really tacky blue eyeshadow, but I'll forgive it. Yes, that's right. But she's trying to sneak her into yes. the hospital. And that's a great scene. That's supposed to be a true story. Like, because he had so many girls mm -hmm. coming in and out and so many dancers. And Nicole was too young, I think, to visit, I think. Yeah, or, uh, I think yeah that's so the they story. had to pass her off as like a new ingenue. Yeah. Classy. Yeah, so she walks by yeah. and she's like, one of his protégés. And yeah. all the nurses are like, ugh, we know Ooh. what that means. But that's how they got Nicole okay. in to see him. Then you have the random doctor who sneaks in there because he wants Bob Fosse's autograph. And it's so inappropriate. And they're very uncomfortable about it. And all I can say is there was no HIPAA law. No. There none. wasn't. No. Like, in today's society, that could not happen. Everyone would be fired. She that sells insurance. Law. Sorry. <laughs> I don't sell it, but I work in that field. <laughs> she would. <laughs> it would not. Yeah. No. It would not fly. But also, it was a great moment to show uh, Michelle Williams doing what she does best. Oh, because she, like, yes. takes him, and she sees instantly this, this inappropriate doctor coming in and being like, give me an autograph, right. man, whose heart is about to be open. And she's like, what? And she's like, this? you know, Mr. Foss, we could get you his house seats for Pippin, but you gotta understand, we need yeah. a private room for him. And the guy is like, oh. Yeah. So that yeah. was that was pretty that was pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> hold on, let's see. Uh, yeah, the, this was one of those episodes that kind of just show you how much Bob Fosse, like his whole life, was mm -hmm. just trying to prove that he was better than the strippers who sexually assaulted yeah. him. Yeah, I mean. It it doesn't forgive any of it, but it really explains like his relationships with women, mm -hmm. um, the fact that he could never stop himself, the fact that like everyone who he wanted to prove himself to was like, do this thing, it's gonna be yeah. great. Like it's so hard to I don't know. It's a couple, it's it's a lot. It's a lot it's a lot of different things that are thrown together to make these iconic musical theater performances that, yep. I mean, because of his obsession, he is one of the few Broadway choreographers who, maybe the Broadway choreographer, maybe the choreographer, whose style you can look at and go, oh, that's bossy. Oh, he's the only one that I can be like, 
100 yeah. percent with you know i can there I, are other ones that i kind of get there are others i i could get that i that you or i like yes but any but the Joe Gen Pop yeah. is going to know Fosse. Any Joe Blow off the street is going to know a Fosse look. Even if they don't have the words for it, they're like, that's what Broadway is. Mm -hmm. Like, you and I could be like, that's Agnes DeMille. That's Jerome yeah. Robbins. But, like, most of us know what Fosse is. And it's crazy to yeah. think that this this uh, style that's so definitive that like kind of is Broadway yeah. is made up of all these different parts and part of the parts is like childhood trauma and yeah. sexual assault trying to prove something they're all cogs in the in the machine wheel of yeah. yeah yeah and, and there's also the fact that he just was just a vaudeville junkie mm -hmm. like he just loved showbiz um you know he does that thing in all that jazz yeah. where he's like he has his morning routine where he pops his pills and does his thing and he goes at showbiz you know and how it, very mickey and judy yeah it's that whole idea that you're just gonna like yeah. put on a show mm -hmm. and and everything else be damned and that's why he died at 60 or whatever how old so he old <laughs> so young i know obviously it'd be so I know, no. Yeah. It, it was a lot. Yeah, it, it, it's so funny that, you know, we're all ready for this episode about Chicago, mm -hmm. but it, it's really true. Like, Chicago was kind of defined, was this thing that he was roped into. And Chicago was not appreciated no. for its time. It didn't win any awards. It was up against a chorus line mm -hmm. in 1975, which, like, pfft. and then it had this really bleak, dark tone. Uh, which is very subversive and uh, you know it worked in films like cabaret but i think on broadway at no. that time broadway just wasn't ready for it oh, you know man did they revive that oh my god chorus line was enough of like a subversion at the time but yes. having this show about just all every single character in it is a garbage person mm -hmm. and the fact that all the songs are evocative of vaudeville acts you know, the, yeah. every song is a vaudeville act from like the way it's introduced to the different styles. Um, and that wouldn't have happened without like such a vaudeville fanboy. Oh yeah. Like Bob Fosse. And then Gwen Verdon the just. Bowler at. Oh, right. And then Gwen <laughs> just pushing, yeah. pushing because I mean, seriously, and I don't blame her. I don't blame her into pushing him towards that heart no. attack because seriously after what he put her through like he owed her at least that one more starring vehicle yeah. because as we all know the business is extremely forgiving to mm -hmm. you know men. Phil philandering men like bob fossey but not so much to women who age mm -hmm. so uh, you know we have Gwen to thank for that, yes. for sure. Totally. Um, is there anything else about this episode that we know? I don't think so. I think that was it. Yeah, it was It was a heavy one. Yeah. But it was good. Um, I think it, it, we are in a moment where we are talking about sexual assault with women, and I think yes. it is very important to talk about men who go through sexual assault just as much. Absolutely. It's not just females. No. And they deal with it differently because yeah. they're not, I mean, women are barely allowed to talk. We're only just allowed oh, to yeah, talk about it now. It's like, oh, but you're a man. Man, it's incredibly stigmatized yeah. um, and repressed. And so I, I think it's positive that we have a product out here right now that's talking about the realities of Absolutely. that. Um, because it's true. It happened to him, man. And he was always very upfront about it. It's in all that jazz. There's a big portion of all that jazz yeah, that is all about anything. that. And he knew it. Like, Bob Fosse knew how fucked up it was. And everyone around him was like, lucky, lucky, you look, check you out. Yeah, right. Having sex with all that. these women before you even understand what sex is. Boy, what a lucky kid you are. Like, Jesus. So, um, I'm very glad they addressed it. Um, okay, so we have... Two episodes left? I think so. I think two left. What do you think that they're going to hit that we well, have not hit? We still... Okay, so we haven't got talked about Sweet Charity yet. I honestly don't know if we're even going to get there. We have two episodes left. They skipped left. so far over it at this point. That'd be a really hard jump to I get mean, back. Yeah, they, they did a lot of jumping back in time in the first 
couple, two or yeah. three episodes, but then they haven't done it in the no, last No, that's few. why I'm wondering if they would even. So I'm curious. I feel like they have to because it's such an important it's, it's huge for them, part yes. of their story. So maybe they'll do a time jump or maybe. something. Um, obviously, the last episode will be <laughs> gearing towards his death. Um, the thing is, after Chicago... Uh, I don't think he had very, I don't think he really had any more definitive Broadway shows. Mm -hmm. He had this dance show called like Dancin, which was okay, but hasn't really stood the test of time. No. And then obviously there's all that jazz. So all that jazz is amazing. would be the next big tent pole of his. Yeah. Uh, there will probably be some fallout from him losing all the Tony mm -hmm. Awards for Chicago. Um... But that's it. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm interested to see mm, kind of what they do. Yeah. I don't think there's any other real important, like, major things in his life. No. I mean, there's, you know, he's dealing with his health through sure. all this stuff. Um, so. Yeah, I want to see how they wrap it up. Yeah. Like how they, yeah. Okay. So we'll see. So we have two more episodes. Take care yes. of yourself, people. Tune in. And, uh, you know. Take a nap. Take care of yourselves. Hacha. Whoopee. Oh. Yeah. Oh.